PCR video tutorial on susceptible exposed infected recovered mortality model. We're going to use the COVID-19 data as our motivation. This one we're going to look at intervention because we looked and we tuned our model last time and I've tuned it a little bit more and it doesn't do so good. So let's just flip back through some of the pictures that we had and you'll see, well, this was the deaths and it kind of fits. It's doing sort of the right thing. This is the recovereds, and it's kind of doing the right thing. And this is our infections. And notice that it doesn't really match very well up here, nor does it match very well down there. And part of the reason is, is that there has been interventions that have been happening, sort of like social distancing. These are interventions that are changing our parameter. It's changing the parameter of how people are mixing. So what we would like to do is we'd like to incorporate these sort of change points into our model because we know they're causing a, an impact on what's going on. So the question is, is how to do this? We have one parameter that controls this. Well, what we can do is we can add another parameter. Why not? We can create another parameter that is associated with the change point that will modify this number. We're not going to put in a new number for it. What we're going to do is we're going to put in the change that that particular uh, event or intervention has caused and then it'll allow us to quantify that. It's very similar to if you've dealt with indicator variables or dummy variables, you're doing exactly the same idea. You're putting in something that represents I know this is different from that, and I'm going to code it as a 0 or a 1. Okay, So that's what we're going to do in this one. What we're going to do is we're going to use the code that we had last time, and we're going to modify it considerably. So we're going to add another parameter. So I'm going to call this other parameter alpha 2. Okay, And it's going to be the change in this other parameter. And in our case, we know that this is going to be a negative change. Okay, So it's going to take what we had and change it in another direction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy and paste this, and I'm going to put a zero on the end so I know that it's a small change in the other direction. So it's going to be lowering the rate of infection. Okay, so this is the first thing I'm going to do is add this other parameter in. It has an extra zero on it just because I need a starting point, and then I can go and tune it like we did before. But first we have to do this bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change my function name to 2. Why? Because I don't want to write over my old function that I have that kind of works well. Uh, what I'm going to do is add here two numbers in here. So the first thing I'm going to do is add alpha 2. Alpha 2. And then I'm going to have to tell it where the change point is. So at some point, there's going to be a change in this that is going to go where this particular change is going or intervention has occurred. So I'm going to call this change point 1. And this is uh, the value that we're going to put in here. We'll, we'll actually specify it later, and I'll show you how to look at it. But what we need to do is just go in here and then just change our model in two places. We're going to change it here, and we're going to change it here. But once we change it one, remember it's kind of like accounting. I can drag it to the other one. So I have, it's going to remove people from alpha 1, and then we're just going to simply add on our new alpha 2. And then we have to have this other sort of indicator variable that's going to go with it. So I'm going to call this uh, times end 1. Okay? And this here, since the indicator variable is going to be 0 or 1, will only add in this change once we've gone past the change point. Okay, so we're going to take this bit here, and we're going to copy it, and we're going to put this here, and we're going to make sure that it's, it should have copied over the alpha 1, and if I scroll this out a little bit, you can see the rest of it. So you can see I moved this from here to here. The gamma is still around. I guess I could push this like this, just so we can see what's going on. All right, so the, now that we have this here, you can see how this is affected. So let me move this back up since I don't need to have all of that there. Okay, so you can see that these are identical. Now what I need to do is create this end one. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just create it right above it. So I'm going to do end one is just going to be what the time point is. Okay, so it's going to be, I'm going to do if else here. 
because it'll work just fine. So I'm going to do a test. The test is, is I greater than my change point? Okay. If it is, give me a 1, otherwise a 0. Okay. And that will cause that to be added into here. And it will cause our change point to occur. And this is all we really need to do is check to see whether or not we've passed the change point. If we are, we put in a 1. By putting in a 1, that means this alpha 2 becomes active. And it's going to change the rate of infection. Now, once I have this, this should work fine. Now, what I'm going to do here real quick is now that I've got this, I'm going to run this up to here, compile it, make sure everything works. Going to work the same as before. But now I need to put in to my call of this my alpha 2. And I need to put in my change point. And this is the hard part. Where is this change point? So that, that's the million dollar question. But often you can look in the news and see where that is. I'm going to zoom in here real quick. I'm sorry if you were typing. But it looks about like here there's some sort of change point that may have occurred here. Or maybe there's one that's occurred here. I'm just going to guess that there's one that's occurred about here. I know that I'm 77 time points into this thing, so I can go backwards. 77, 76, 75, 74, 73, 72, 71, 70, 69 looks to be about maybe a number I would be interested in. So I can try it and see what it does. So I'm going to make this equal to 69. And I'm just going to look at what the dynamics do. I don't necessarily want to look at all of this, so I'm not going to run it out nearly as far uh, as 200 because we're only 77 out. So let's just run this out to 100 here, 100 here, and make these pictures just so we can see what sort of effect this has on it. Because once I run this, I can keep changing alpha 2 until it does what I want it to do. And we then can match it to the real data. So I run this, and it says my coordinates differ somewhere along the way. It didn't like something along the way. So it says here, arguments unused. Oh, because I was calling the original function. I need to call the new function. Uh, it's amazing how little details like that can trip you up. And knowing how to read the answer or the error that comes out is very important. Okay, so I'm going to run this. And this is the weird picture that I get. And I'm getting a weird picture because I didn't reinitialize everything. Okay, so I need to go back, reinitialize everything. And, oh, no, I don't actually need to reinitialize everything. But I can. I can run it. And this is what I would expect to see because most people don't have the disease right now. Right? So you, you wouldn't expect it to be. Uh, but you can see a little bit of dynamic going on there. And that's sort of what we would expect right now. We already have the data here. So if you have the code from last time, we've already read in the data. Your data should already be read in. It should already be set up. The only thing I have to do is change in here. I'm going to get rid of this out of the way at the moment. They were there before just for reference. So here I'm going to do two. Put in two and let's see what it looks like. I'm going to come down here though and I need to add in my alpha two and my change point, okay? So alpha two is equal to whatever we said it was before above. So we're gonna, which was, if you remember, we just took this and we put it in there, we added an extra zero and we stuck on a minus sign, okay? And then we also added in a change point. And we said that was at 69. So we can see what this does. So if I take this and run this, I can see how it, modifies the infected and you can see that things have changed now i can const i can play with this number more and more and more until i get the sort of look that i want and the fit that i want but it has changed it and if you don't like this here you can just make this zero and see what the change was so you can see how much it's changed from one to the other and maybe i'll do that real quick i'm going to copy this i'm going to put in zero real quick We'll run this again, see what the model looked like. And you saw it change just a little bit here. Then I put in the number. And I see that it changed here. And then when I put on the picture, it changed it. So 
Uh, and that's the key, is it did change the picture. I can move back and forth, and you can barely see this change here. So that means we can tune this like we did before. Just keep playing with the value until we get something that better meets the sort of trend that's going on here. And maybe we could add another one farther back. Adding another one is basically the same process. You're just going to put another alpha in there and you're going to add another indicator function and put those in and it, it actually works. So let's see. So we would want this to be a little more negative. So I'm going to see if I put a two here and see what happens to my picture. Is it too much or is it not enough? Okay. Um, so that one made it smaller. So maybe that was the wrong direction to go. Maybe I want to change this and get rid of these and just make them two zeros. So now my change is not as strong as before. And it's moved it even farther. So maybe if I take off a zero very carefully and make this a nine because then I'm kind of close we can see what occurs and look what that did that changed it dramatically notice how much that dropped so that was just from going from here to here uh, maybe I put in enough zeros here we go try this and there we go so we can tweak this to get it right where we want it to go. So if I made this a nine and put in another nine here, then it's pretty close to the number I had. I can see what it does. And again, this is just this idea of tweaking this or tuning this model to where it does what you want it to do or hopefully does what you want it to do. And these are very sensitive, by the way. That, so when you tune these in you might find that it's difficult to tune them in uh, the way you would normally try to tune them in and you can see at some point it's really going to get to where over here at the end it'll look pretty reasonable and that's what we want we want it to we want a reasonable picture of what's going on and a model that seems to capture these dynamics so keep adding in nines here It'll get closer and closer to the other number we have there as we go along. Uh, I could get rid of this and go with 10. Fill in the rest with zeros. One, two, three, four, five. And what, is this the one that produced the weird curve back over? No. Okay. So then we can slowly make this the correct get closer and closer to a correct value now when we're doing this we have to be careful because this number alpha plus this always has to be positive so if i ever get to that number things are going to go very very poorly for me okay so i'm going to make sure that one number doesn't exceed the other number because it needs to be positive okay so let's see here didn't like that and you just keep playing with it until you get something that looks reasonable. And that's the idea here is we've got an intervention. We're doing something that looks reasonable. Uh, I can even change this to eight. See if that maybe looks more reasonable. Okay, seven. It is moving it ever so slightly. You may or may not be able to see it. But if you stare at it, it's getting much closer to where we want maybe we'll go something ridiculous like this try that and look it's getting much closer to what we want change this and okay so that was too much so why don't we go with three and notice how it fits there it fits quite well on this last stretch it fits quite well and that's important because this is going to impact the other ones, right? If you remember how we, we played with these, it affects these other variables that we are also tracking along with. So notice that this model here isn't so bad, and we could project this one forward. We just have to add in the other two, okay? And that's what we've been sort of working towards is being able to add in these intervention points. Now, I don't know if my intervention point is at the right point or not. I am not going to 
make any comments about that. All I know is that my model seems to fit reasonably well, especially at the end. And now I can look and see what the dynamics look like. And the dynamics here are still taking off. Uh, but it does look like it, if you pay attention to these numbers, flatten the curve out considerably, which is one of the things they've been talking about, is they want to flatten the curve. But when you flatten the curve, you also push all of this out, which means it takes longer for us to get over this situation. Now we have a picture that looks more like last time. But notice this number is not nearly as big as the other one. And that's the key here is we can actually change this even more and see what different scenarios would do now that I have this change point in here. Okay, so here's this one. And this one doesn't look so horrible. <laughs> okay, this one looks more like what the government would say. But notice that you can see we're tracking with the data here on this one. Um, notice we could even shrink it down a little bit more. And you can see what it does. Uh, it may or may not match the data. So this one says we're at the peak. If this change is the quantification of how much social distancing has caused, then we're at the peak. But my guess is we're not at the peak. So I'm going to put this back to two. But anyway, this is how you would play with these models, and you would come up with a reasonable expectation of when things are going to occur and when things are going to be over. You just need to take and pay attention to the dates here. So you need to add whatever here. So here's the peak is 150 days, and that's 150 days from January 22nd. Okay? It's not 150 days into the year. All right. So we figured out how to add an intervention in, and we've seen how to tweak this to allow it to fit our data better and how we can use that to project forward and extrapolate. And now what we want to do is see if we can't maybe put in one more of these interventions, and then use the data to estimate it. Okay, That's the key. We want the data to talk as much as possible. So we'll do work on doing that in the next video. See you there.